College enrollment is on the decline as the rising cost of tuition deters students from taking that path towards a degree. But another rising phenomenon may also have an, an impact here. It's artificial intelligence. And as concerns around the future of the job market rises, for more on the state of the education technology space, we're joined by Coursera CEO Jeff Magian Calda. Jeff, great to speak with you as always. When Thank we, you. Absolutely. When we think about the kind of broader educational economy right now, this, I mean, this is one of the highest or most exported U.S. commodities as well that we have to think about here. And so with that in mind, how has artificial intelligence changed the thought process for students around what type of degree they're pursuing, how much they're willing to pay for that degree and, and what their studies look like? Yeah, I think it's not really going to so much change, I think, how students go about picking a college degree. Generally speaking, what people say is, where are the good jobs and what are the schools and degrees that can get me a better job or advance my career? I do think it is changing where the good jobs are going to be in ways that we don't really know for sure. Uh, I gave a keynote yesterday, and what's interesting is if you look back to 2016 and the AI that was available at that time, the big impacts people were expecting and what we're seeing is people with less education are more impacted by more traditional AI. But the new class of AI, this generative AI, especially chat, GPT, and other generative language AIs, it's gonna have the biggest impact on people who have college degrees. And so a lot of the things that we think or thought weren't very predictable and able to be done with machines is looking like machines can do those things. So I think a lot more investment now in broader human skills with good fluency in data science and computer science. Jeff, uh, can you break down for us how you are preparing your company for this change? Well, I mean, internally, what happened was as, as I was sort of following GPT-2 and GPT-3. I mean, our, our, our engineers were kind of banging on it and through APIs, you know, an engineer could, could hit those services. Once ChatGPT came out, a couple of things happened. Number one, I could personally use it myself and the model underneath it was a, was a lot more effective. So. I mean, as soon as I used it, I was like, this is a total game changer. Uh, I, I've, I'm an English major. I could not believe the facility that it could create language. So we immediately created a team. Well, actually, there's already a team, but we, we really escalated. I put together my executive team. We spent a ton of time thinking about how to respond. Yesterday, we previewed uh, three major advances using AI that we're rolling out uh, in the coming weeks. One is a coach to help people learn. One is a course builder to help people build content. The third is machine learning translation to make courses available to basically anyone in the world who speaks almost any language. What do you forecast or, or perhaps project the financial benefit of generative AI could be for a company like Coursera? How does it change the, the total addressable market? Well, I think one major thing that it does, and we had machine learning translation before generative AI, but the, but the, it's sort of a different approach to translation that really increases the quality of machine-based translations. Translating a course uh, with humans was about $10,000. Now it's about $20. Uh, the quality still needs to be a little bit higher, but generally speaking, the global addressable market, when every course can be available to every person who speaks almost any language, that clearly helps. The cost of content production also will come down you know, dramatically and the speed. So I think there's gonna be a lot more content and what people are gonna be looking for is who can I really trust and what kind of a credential can signal that I have the skills that employers are looking for. Jeff, how dangerous is AI? I mean, in my opinion, I'm pretty worried about it. What we're doing at Coursera, we're, we're implementing it really as a learning coach. And so it's all grounded in content on these courses that really expert uh, professors and industry leaders have, have put together. So for us, it's just like a really smart tutor that can read all the material and explain it to you. But once AI starts controlling systems, um, then you got to be really thoughtful about what's the optimization that that AI is pursuing. Some people call this alignment. But if it can control important systems and those systems can kind of garner resources, we really have to make sure that we understand what objective the AI is pursuing and what is our ability to monitor and control AI's control of that system. So that, that's what I kind of worry about is systems control. If there is the fear about AI as well, not just from yourself. I mean, this has been talked about among some other tech CEOs that have come forward yeah. uh, for better or for worse. And some of them have been openly criticized about that too. 
then why are we moving so quickly towards a future where generative AI is embedded within everything from cybersecurity to some of the very search functions that we use on a day-in, day-out basis? I think it's, it's a few things. Clearly, AI presents an incredible new set of capabilities. I mean, to, to me, you know, somewhat you know, scary new capabilities, but they, they are really uh, powerful capabilities that can create a lot of value for customer, can do things that we never thought possible. The idea that every single person in the world could have a multilingual expert AI tutor teaching them things that are difficult for them to understand. I mean, it, it's kind of revolutionary. So it really does afford a lot of benefits. But um, there also are dangers. I, I think one of the things that's happening though is, is because the power of AI is so obvious, countries uh, don't want to fall behind in the race and large companies don't want to fall behind in the race. And so I, I really do think there is an AI race going on at the geopolitical level and also at the company level. And so um, you know nobody really wants to slow down because there could be big disadvantages of losing that race, advantages to winning the race, but no one's really pacing the race because you know no one wants to set themselves as, as at a disadvantage. So, you know, I I think what we need to collectively do pretty quickly is try to figure out what are the boundaries of, of where we want this to go, and where we need to to come you know kind of pull back and make sure that the dangers don't exceed what the benefits are going to be. Jeff, we spoke with IBM Vice Chair Gary Cohn earlier this week, and I asked him about what artificial intelligence as an economic input would look like and what that means for the employment situation too. I, I want to play this quick clip and then get your feedback and your response sure. on the other side. We have seen very few things in, in our generation that have really changed worker productivity. What's in front of you, the laptop or the computer, was the last major shift in wor worker productivity. AI and machine learning could be the next big leg in worker productivity. And the next thing that I asked to him thereafter, I'll also pose to you, which is, does that productivity come in tandem of or in replacement of the existing headcount at certain companies that are going to look to roll out artificial intelligence? I think it's gonna be both. Um, you know, my, my sense is what's, what's happening, and this was true on the mechanical side with you know, more traditional AI that controlled you know, machines that could could repeat tasks. These are kind of like machines that will start repeating or, or um, essentially automating cognitive tasks. Entry level, so there's a whole new class of activities that are gonna be automated. These are sort of cognitive, uh, cognitive activities of writing and synthesizing messages, summarizing things. Um, but it feels to me like what's gonna happen is the first set of tasks that will be most easily automated are those associated with entry level jobs that are very heavy in media, in language, in audio, in images, in video. So entry level jobs that deal with those things are gonna largely be automated. Experts who can control uh, workflows of those things and can understand context of a business, context of a customer problem, to deploy those bots to create value for customers, I think that they're gonna be far more productive. So I, I think there might be a bit of disparity experienced people who understand business context and customer issues will be able to use these types of tools to dramatically expand their productivity. Entry level folks, I think are gonna have a tougher time getting into positions because they don't have the context and experience from the business, but a lot of the cognitive skills that they could bring are able to be done pretty well with AI. So I think there's gonna be a bigger future for apprenticeships and training programs to give newer employees in a company the kind of context that will help them be more productive. And I do think that uh, it's good. It's definitely going to replace some jobs. I mean, if, if everybody is five times more productive, um, I just don't see how that might. I mean, I'm sure that's going to have some impact on the number of people that companies hire. And it has an impact on the type of jobs that people start to train themselves for as well here. We actually put this to a poll for um, for some of our viewers here. And, and here's a look at some of the results. Uh, many people trying to figure out if this is a cause for concern in the job market. And the majority of them, at least for this poll, saying yes, it is definitely a concern. And it was interesting, the second largest response of the poll was depends upon the career, which is kind of mirroring what you're saying. So what are the types of careers and then thus the types of degrees that people are probably going to opt out of and decide to go in a different direction as a result of AI? 
Yeah, there was a great report that just came out March 27th from OpenAI and um, University of Pennsylvania. And what th they looked at all the different job categories and said, what is the exposure to each job category, kind of like a career, to GPT-4? And you know, there were some jobs that weren't really affected, but these are stonemasons, slaughterers, certain types of construction jobs, and not, not all super high paying jobs. So it, it does depend on the career a little bit, but I'll tell you, once you can automate all physical motion or, or a lot of the repetitive motion, that's a lot of manufact manufacturing jobs. And then once you can automate almost all entry-level media-based tasks, uh, yeah, that's a lot of the you know, people with college degrees, it's a, it's a lot of careers that are going to be impacted, not necessarily eliminated, but impacted. Right. To your question of, well, what skills should people be learning? There was a great report that just came out from McKinsey fairly recently where they looked at what kinds of human skills will be most important to be effective in the workplace. It's things like critical thinking, teamwork, collaboration, adaptability, dealing with uncertainty, storytelling, influencing, things associated with working with people. Does that mean that AI should bring down the cost of a college education? No doubt about it, absolutely. In fact, we talked yesterday about a master's of science and data science from University of Colorado Boulder, great, great school, $15,000 performance-based admissions where you can start the degree using open content on Coursera for $49 a month and actually finish up a master's fully online for 15,000. All right, we'll leave it there. Coursera CEO Jeff Majin Calder, always good to see you. Have a good weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Nice to see you. Thank you.